Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you for your patience. Um, so the board has conferred, and while we believe the rules allow Ms. Kate to offer the exhibits that she brings with her to the hearing, as per the rule, uh, we also hear Mr. West saying that he needs more time to push to uh, to review those, given the volume um, and the limited time he's had to review at least the portions that Ms. Kate is going to rely on. So. We um, will continue this case until our April en banc. Uh, we will likely not continue it again, so everyone mark your calendars and make sure you can be present. To make sure we don't end up in this situation again, we're going to impose a scheduling order. Um, Ms. Cates, if you could file whatever briefing, if you just want to resubmit what you filed yesterday or if you want to have some more time to work on it, Submit your brief by February 16th. And then Mr. West will give you until March 8th to file any responsive briefing. And absent leave, will not consider any other briefing. The parties can exchange or should exchange any exhibits they want to use um, at the hearing by April 1st. So you, you might attach those to your briefing, but if there's something that you want to use that's not attached to your briefing, you should submit those by April 1st. Yes. That's unfortunate, but that's uh, the, they, the timing worked out. Um, so with that, any other comments? Is, is that an okay schedule for the parties? Yes. All right. Thank you. So you're dismissed, and we'll see you in April. I'll call the next case, which is case number 68331 in the matter of William O. Grimsinger, Jr. Um, Ms. Cates, uh, you're appearing for the commission again? And has Mr. Grimsinger or anyone on his behalf arrived in the courtroom? No. I assume we haven't heard anything from Mr. Grimsinger? You may. Thank you. All right. Um, Ms. Gates, you may proceed. This is a revocation uh, of probation proceeding brought under Part 2.22 of the Texas Rules of Disciplinary Procedure, seeking to revoke the judge the partially seeking to revoke the judgment in case numbers 2021-05541 and 2021-06054 uh, of an agreed judgment of probated suspension entered July 8, 2022. The petition for revocation of probation was filed with this board on October 2nd, 2023. Respondent was served on October 3rd, 2023 by a personal service by Marty A. Mean, a private process server. Original proof of service has been on file since October 13th, 2023. Respondent violated the terms of the judgment by failing to comply with the following terms. Respondent has failed to pay the ordered restitution to Ronald Dwayne Thomas as ordered. In its entirety, he has failed to pay the entirety of the restitution. Respondent has also failed to pay any of the restitution ordered to be paid to Randy Sullivan. Respondent has also failed to make contact, failed to make contact with the Chief Disciplinary Counsel's Office Compliance Monitor uh, no later than seven days after receipt of the copy of the judgment to coordinate respondent's compliance. Respondent also failed to submit to monitoring of his law practice of a period of one year by an attorney monitor acceptable to the State Bar of Texas. Respondent also failed to make contact with the Chief Disciplinary Counsel's Office Compliance Monitor uh, in order to coordinate uh, compliance deadlines. At this time, we would offer the following exhibits. Exhibit 1, a certified copy of the agreed judgment of probated suspension, dated July 8, 2022. Exhibit 2, the business records affidavit of Heather White, the, 
Compliance Monitor of the Chief Office of the Chief Disciplinary Counsel with documents. Exhibit 3, an original certificate from Blake A. Hawthorne, Clerk of the Supreme Court of Texas, dated January 3, 2024, indicating that respondent is licensed but not currently authorized to practice law in the state of Texas. Uh, I will offer those at this time. Exhibits 1, 2, and 3 are admitted. I would like to call the compliance monitor Heather White to the stand. custodian of records for the Office of Chief Disciplinary Counsel. Yes, I am. And did you put this, these documents together? Yes, I did. And is it your signature that is on the desk that is operating? Yes, it is. Can you please remind us um, what terms Mr. Grimsinger was required to complete
tell me to date, what amount should a spiritual person have paid in restitution in January for their restitution to him? Yes. We currently have about $4,875 to pay for the restitution. To each of them, or is that the combined total? To each. And I, I apologize, I interrupted you. Are there any other terms that he is required to pay? So, yeah. Can you please turn in Exhibit 2 to page 2 of that exhibit? What is the date on that document? August 9, 2014. And what is this document? the next time you tried reaching out to Mr. Rosinger? And what method did you reach out to Mr. Rosinger? Why did you reach out to respond to on the 4th of October? Because at this stage, he's not Mr. Grimsinger respond to that activity? No, they were not. Did you reach out a subsequent time to Mr. Grimsinger? Yes, I did. And on January 18th, And how did you reach out to him? The same method, being help served by the mail and by the mail. And why were you attempting to contact him in January of 2023? Because I still have not heard from Mr. So January 19th, 2023, had Mr. Grimsinger completed any of his terms? No. Uh, did you reach out to him after that? Yes. When was the next time you reached out to him after that? <coughs> Mr. Grimsinger contact uh, you or anyone in the compliance department following the January 19th or the January 24th letters? No. Uh, when did you, after the January attempts at communication, when did you next reach out to Mr. Grimsinger? On July 31st, 2023. No, he okay. I'm sorry, we were detained. Yes, July 31st, And why did you reach out to him? Subsequent to that, Jack Joy.
when did you call me? On August 31st, 2023. Can you tell me what transpired in that conversation? Yes. So this was the first conversation that I had with him, uh, and we discussed why he had contacted me at this point. It had been a year since the judge had been entered into the last hearing, and, um, and he said that he did not have time. And then I asked him. <coughs> Can you explain to the board what TDOC is? Yes, it's the, um, I'm not sure if you can look at the document to look at it. I, I believe it's, it's the Texas Lawyers Assistance Program. That's it, that's it. Texas Lawyers Yes, program. we're familiar. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, and so when there is, and I suspect that maybe there could be some sort of informal crisis, I'll let you know, reach out to the most common office to Judgment, correct? Correct. Uh, as you sit here today, has Mr. Grimsinger complied with any of the other findings he was required to make uh, in the judgment? Yes. Can you remind us again, just one more time, which of them is that he is still outstanding on uh, that he has not met? Yes, he has not. Excuse. Thank you. Uh, in light of the evidence presented um, and Mr. Grimsinger's absence, at this time, the petitioner would request that the revocation be entered, um, revoking the probationary period of the respondents in this case of All right. Thank you. We'll take that under advisement. All right. Thank you. This concludes um, this on session of the Board of Disciplinary Appeals, and we'll see you next quarter. Thank you.